As requested, this is the fashion analysis for Moses and Mary's church wedding that held in Ghana on Saturday, March 1st, 2024. Congratulations again to the couple. May the grace of God continually abide with you. Amen. As usual, with weddings, there's no theme. So I'm going to rate outfits primarily based on fit, color combination, and style. That being said, let's get into the fashion rules for hashtag forever bliss church wedding. Hey y'all, Chantel here, the curator of this channel, your fashion bestie, and the foremost fashion analyst in this side of the Atlantic. Yeah, I said it. Thank you all so much for joining me today. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Also, don't forget to click on the bell icon next to the subscribe button. So whenever I post new content on here, you'll be one of the first to get the notification. Alrighty, thank you so much. Yeah. My original love for weddings is to kick things off with the couple's first look. Marry in this satin straight cut floor length wedding dress by Ikben. Details include an off-shoulder neckline with lace inserts that gives a cold shoulder effect. Long sleeve with a slightly extended cuff that is highlighted with this lace cutout. The waistline has some ruching going on. And lastly is the detachable train. Accessories for this look include silver earrings, a delicately detailed cathedral length veil, and bouquet made from fresh white roses. Natural makeup look by Regis Makeovers is pretty and it complemented her low bone hairstyle. I don't know how I truly feel about this dress, to be honest. I can't say I hate it and I also cannot say I love it. I'm indifferent in simple terms because the fabric looks really stiff and I, I just, I think the style is not modern. There's just something that is off. May 8th Gallery played it very, very safe with styling, if you ask me. From the traditional wedding, you can tell that Marie loves fashion. She loves modest, classy fashion. This falls under modest, but I can't find the classy parts. Like the classy element is missing here. Lace is ultimately supposed to infuse softness and femininity to an outfit, right? But this, in my opinion, is doing the opposite. It's too stiff, and I think it aged her a bit. Chantilly or any soft lace texture would have done a better job. Also, this splitted or rouge detail on the waistline had no business on this dress. Mary's body is pretty athletic and doesn't need to hide anything, in my opinion. It ended up making the dress look frumpy and so out of place. Let me not even talk about the lace cutout on the sleeves. It's giving afterthoughts, like last minute additive. That this dress is even this nice on her is thanks to Marie's body and her beauty. Let me just put it out here. Not the dress. I'm going to have to rate her 7 out of 10 for this. I feel like that's the highest I can go with this rating. Next is the groom wearing this tan bespoke suit by Deji and Kola. Styled by Emmanuel Good News, the suit features a white button-up shirt, a brown bow tie, a jacket with satin double peak lapels, and some yarn weave-like details on the sleeves and around the hem of the jacket. Tuxedo pants complete with grogging stripe on both sides is the perfect fit on him. Um, to complete the look as silver tone jewelry and this sleek two-tone leather Oxford shoes with side lacing. This look was a showstopper. He looked good. He, he, he represented very well. Emmanuel styled Moses to perfection. I will rate Moses a 9 out of 10 for this. Yeah, he looked that good. I couldn't get stills for the couple's reception look, so we are going to have to make do with the video you're about to see. Marie in this pink satin floor and dress, also by Ikmen, I guess. Um, the dress features a Sabrina neckline with full on pearl detailing there, as well as on the sleeves and splattered on the bodies, the front of the bodies, that is. Waistline has this peplum ish structure thingy going on. I like this, color is great, it complements her skin tone, and the style is pretty modest. It's nice, it's cute. She gets an 8 out of 10 for this one. Moses we'll changed into this black diamante velvet blazer, complete with a white button up, white bow tie, and black pants. He looks dapper and party ready with the bling bling going on. An 8 out of 10 from me. 
for this. Moving over to the bridal party and a few guests that attended the Bliss's White Wedding. Source and style by May 8th Gallery. The bridal party color of the day was orange and beige for men and just orange for women. The groomsmen wearing an orange double-breasted blazer with a white shirt underneath and an orange bow tie to further jazz up the look. Beige pants with green um, stripes on the sides. Some men styled theirs with black shoes like loafers, while others opted for brown dress shoes. The slim silhouette made it fit so close to their body. The color combination orange and beige on its own is great, but for this outfit, I'm not much of a fan. I think it should have been balanced out. Imagine switching the jacket to match the pants and the bow tie being the pop of color to match the green stripes on the pants. The double-breasted jacket is already bold enough. Why add a bold bow tie again? I think it's really off. It's giving me Usher's, Usher's vibe. I can bet that none of them will repeat this outfit the same way it is. Now, probably they'll wear the jacket on its own or the pants on its own, but together, uh -uh. I respect the couple's color choice, but for me, styling is a miss. Probably they would have gotten a male stylist. Yeah, 7 out of 10 from me for the groomsmen, collectively. Yeah. The bridesmaids, on the other hand, works perfectly. That's the difference fabric and patterns can make. Theirs is a satin floor length dress with asymmetric neckline. It features these lace inserts that double as sleeves. Also, cut C May 8th gallery. The fit on all girls are great, or is great rather. Style is cute. Subtle makeup, dainty jewelry, and those really cute bouquet further complemented the look. The bridesmaids get an 8 out of 10 for how well they look. They look really nice. Frank Eaton is the first guest I'll be talking about. Wearing this brown double-breasted Glen plaid suit by Kimono Collection. This is a statement suit that oozes stylish and savvy, but conservative. <laughs> I love that he wasn't afraid to go all out with accessories with texture such as the bow tie and um, pocket square in different prints. I think they added more depth to the suit without overwhelming it. Pants are given the 70s with the flared out style. To further amplify the vintage look, he added a fedora, not forgetting the sunglasses, coral bangle to bring you home to Nigeria. <laughs> Some rings, and lastly, the black booties that brought the entire look together. Frank's look is a classic combination that exudes sophistication and a well-tailored appearance. He gets a 9 out of 10. Very gentlemanly. I love, love, love his look. Kenny Thompson came through rocking earth stones. This cutwork lace floor length mermaid hand dress by Vicky James Official with knee length slit is a stunner. She styled it with this Jacquemus beige Lusac round. Is it Lusac round or Lusac round? One of them though. You know how French can be. Shoulder bag and white head baker strappy sandals. Makeup by Riri Makeovers looks glamorous and side part bouncy coil styled by Esplendido Beauty frames her face just right. Jewelry are these gold chandelier earrings. Henny looked gorgeous. This look deserves an 8 out of 10. The first Ashrebi lady in this episode of Fashion Rose is the face behind the May 8th gallery brand. She also sourced for the Ashrebi. The Ashrebi is this cut-out orange lace adorned with sequins. She opted for an over-the-top style with details such as visible boning corsets, um, ruching around the waist, mesh sleeves, and these elaborate structured and stone flower design thingies. Arewa Gele style and her gorgeous YSL bag for accessory. She gets an 8 out of 10. The couple's close friend and outstanding entertainer, Anita Asoha, aka Real Worry Pekin, looking phenomenal in this dress by Medlin Couture Collection. Floor length with a detachable satin train, high neck, and long sleeve made from orange chantilly lace. The details on the bodies are outstanding. Pleated in front and at the back, a plain fabric that houses the corset with fabric covered buttons. It also features this low waist V back situation that gives it this um, wow effect. She shunned the gilet route and instead opted for this cute fascinator by Temi collection. 
made from ashoike. This tweak easily transformed the look to something unconventional. Smoked out eye makeup by Tolu Felix MUA suits her. Dainty pearl earring, tiny studs, and her wedding ring for jewelry. Top tier look if you ask me. Anita gets a 9 out of 10. I'm still in awe at how good she looked. She looked really, really amazing. And you're Lua looking dapper in this fit styled by Emmanuel Good News. Tan suit with a twist. Um, jacket, white button-up shirt, a bow tie, kilted texture waist coat with crisscross lacing at the back, and fabric covered buttons in front. A kilt, aka skirt. Straight cut pants and brown dual tone oxfords for shoes with his tan socks picking out or picking through, whatever the word is. Silver was the choice of jewelry finish, watch, bangles, and a ring. Unrelated, but allow me to point something out to you all. You see Annie's look. The primary thing that makes this outstanding, that makes this look so good, is not necessarily the style. It actually stems more from the color of the outfit than the style. Tan, beige, and a lot of earthy tones exude elegance. They look very rich and luxe, which takes me back to the groomsmen. Great idea and all, but color combination choice dampened the look, if you ask me. I said all that to say that color combination plays an uber important role when it comes to any outfit. Back to any. <laughs> I'll rate him at 8 out of 10 for this. Layole Oyatogun in BKX Lagos is next. Flawless flared out hem dress with an interesting V cut waistline that accentuated her figure. The bodice has a plain base adorned with patchwork sequin appliques, round neckline with tulle fabric. Lastly, are the Juliet sleeves that infuse balance into the dress. Demure the makeup by Ohemas Makeover looks great and it pairs well with the interesting Gilly style courtesy bridal affair. Other accents include this gold chunky earring, dual colored ring, and the plain counterpart. <laughs> BKS Lagos sure knows how to play up Lyolet's figure. The dress fits like a glove. She deserves an 8 out of 10 for this. An Iberia looking exquisite in Nello Woman. Intricately hand beaded, straight cut, long sleeve dress. <laughs> the beadwork is reminiscent of a spider web. Very, very interesting, if you ask me. The fact that this was beaded on two deserves an extra mark because of how delicate that fabric is. Underneath that is the corset that doubles as a bustier. Lower part of the dress was kept simple to highlight the ashwabi fabric. Sally Black Pond, the bow style gilly. Sultry makeup look courtesy glow with Lillian. Silver earrings and this cute silver Fendi graphic purse to complete the look. 8 out of 10 for the Omalicha. That is Anna Ebiri. To bring this section to a climax is Medlin Boss rocking or strutting her stuff in her brand Medlin Couture Collection, of course. Let's forget about the other details for a moment and concentrate on the elephant in the room. <laughs> AKA this raw silk voluminous peplum train. I understand the other features of the dress like the lace upper and straight cut skirt are simple and she needed to jazz up the look. But I don't think this is the way to do it. The train, especially the peplum area, looks so frumpy. The proportions of the different fabric textures used are overwhelming. It lacks balance. The style is perfect for a red carpet event with different fabrics, of course, not a wedding. How can you wear a chapel length train to someone's wedding? Please now. It's giving me of staging vibes. That's what I'm seeing here. That might not be her mindset, but I mean... Yeah. I see the retro elements with the pearls and fascinator by Temi Collections, which I like. Overall, not a bad look, but in my view, wrong event. She gets a 5 out of 10 for me for this. <laughs> Moving over to the best and worst dress category. Yeah. Best dressed for the hashtag forever bliss, hashtag mmbliss24. It's obviously the couple. But in this case, I'm leaning more towards the groom than the bride. But since they are married, they are now young. So yeah, put of them in best dress for their wedding. So I'm going to tweak things today and give best dress for another category. That's the guest. For best dressed meal, I definitely, without a doubt, have to give it to Francis in Kimono Collection. Look dapper, look so good. Love, love, love it. 
Best dressed female, you already know now, and it's our Soha, aka Real Warrior Begin. It was a vision to behold with that outfit. Rocking medley for their collection. Love, love, love it. Chest kiss. Was dress, same as the traditional wedding. Nobody falls under that category for me, if I'm being honest. But over to you, though, if there's anyone that falls under your worst dress category and your best dress, be sure to leave same in the comment section per usual. All right? I like um, Yeah, that's it. There you have it. Congratulations again to the newlyweds. That concludes the hashtag forever bliss, hashtag mmbliss24 fashion rose. Thank you all so much for the push. Thank you all so much for watching the first um, installment or the first episode and leaving comments, just engaging in general. Give the video a thumbs up, share, leave a comment in the comment section, and subscribe if you are not yet a member of the Chantel Nation family. We are going places, so we are moving. Until I come away again, don't forget to stay amazing. Bye, y'all.